Hey there, Louis Yacobelis here. Thanks for stopping by. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can manage projects inside of Microsoft Teams using an awesome app called Zoho Projects. Now, before we get started, if you find this tutorial helpful, please hit that thumbs up button below and be sure to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on the latest Microsoft Teams tutorials. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Luigi Acobellis to make sure that you don't miss out on any of my new content. Last but not least, if you would like to get a free account to Zoho Projects, yes, that's right, a free permanent account to Zoho Projects, sign up for an account using my referral link below and you will get indefinite access to Zoho Projects. Now let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, before we get started, this tutorial is actually broken up into two distinct sections. In the first part of this tutorial, I'll actually provide you with an overview of how to use Zoho Projects through its web app. The reason for this is in order to use the Zoho Projects Microsoft Teams application, you have to have already created a project record, which is done in the Zoho Projects web app. And there are also a few other differences between the Zoho Projects web app and Microsoft Teams app. And so it's important for you to understand those differences before trying to use it in Microsoft Teams. Now, if you're already familiar with how to use Zoho Projects, skip to the second part of this tutorial where I'll show you how to use the Zoho Projects Microsoft Teams app in depth. Now, let's go ahead and let's check it out. All right, now before we get started, you may be asking yourself, who exactly is Zoho? Well, Zoho Corporation is an Indian multinational company that specializes in software development, cloud computing, and web-based business applications. Now, Zoho features a ton of different useful and awesome business applications, including Zoho CRM, Zoho Office, and Zoho Creator, which is a low-code, no-code application development platform. Now, Zoho Corporation has its global headquarters based in Chennai, India, and its corporate headquarters based in Pleasanton, California. Now, Zoho Projects is Zoho's online project management software that can be used to manage projects of all scales and magnitudes, and even according to different methodologies, such as agile or traditional waterfall. Now, let's go ahead and let's get started with Zoho Projects. All right, now before we look at how to use Zoho projects in Microsoft Teams, we are going to do a brief walkthrough of some of the core functionality of Zoho projects directly in the Zoho projects web application. So what you're looking at here is the landing page when you log into Zoho projects, and you'll see here that it shows you some pretty useful information. Now, very quickly, I'm just gonna walk through some of the different menus here. Um, as you can see, the homepage is going to show you some statistics about your work on all of the different projects, such as your tasks, open and closed, issues, open and closed, and milestones. You can also see that you have the ability to add widgets here. Uh, for example, my tasks will provide you with details about your actual task assignments. Uh, same thing with issues and work items. And if I keep scrolling down here, um, you can see things like timesheets and milestones, etc. So Zoho Projects, really awesome and super customizable to help you access the project information that you need. Now, very quickly, clicking on the next menu option feed, this is going to show you an activity feed of all the different um, activities or updates that are occurring on your project. So for example, creating a task or assigning a task, you're going to see uh, a card here that displays that detail. If somebody's adding comments, for example, in a project, you're going to see that. So the activity feed here is similar to the activity feed in Microsoft Teams in that this is where you come to actually get up to speed on the things that are happening on your projects. Clicking on the next menu option, discussions. So this is a place where you can actually have uh, discussions, specific targeted discussions around your different projects. So you have the ability to create sort of threaded conversations to facilitate uh, discussions about work, about projects. Moving on uh, to reports, this is where you can come to access some out of the box reports and reports that you can create. So you can see here by default, I'm able to view a project timeline Gantt chart for one of my projects that exists here. And if I click on the dropdown, I can switch over to a timesheet report 
So I can easily see timesheets that have been submitted and the corresponding hours against my projects. Next up, you also have a calendar. So you can access the calendar to view the work assignments that are assigned to you. Okay, so you can see here, I can uh, easily view assignments and their start and end dates. I can toggle between month or day view, for example, to help me sort of summarize all of the different assignments um, on my project. And if I wanna go ahead and add activity to the calendar, I can do that as well. Uh, and last but not least is projects. Now this is where you come to actually view the projects that you have access to or, or that you're a member of the project team uh, and where you can actually go to create a new project. So I'll just quickly click on new project and I will add a new project here for demonstration purposes. So you want to give your project a name, select the owner, in this case, I'll just leave that to me. Uh, now Zoho Projects does feature the ability to create templated projects. So if perhaps you, know, you are doing software implementations and you wanna create a templated project plan for those types of projects, you can define templates and select them when you're creating new projects. You can select your start and end date. So I'll just populate this with some random dates. Okay, now you also have the ability to make this a strict project. Uh, essentially what a strict project is, is if you check this, you are not going to be able to create tasks, issues, milestones that extend beyond the boundaries of the start and end date. So again, pretty useful. Now I'm just going to enter uh, some commentary into the project overview. So this is a test project. Okay, uh, you can actually specify layouts for how you want your tasks to be displayed. Okay, now this is specifically referring to the task form. So you can actually customize uh, what fields are displayed on the forms, the views of the actual attributes on those forms and assign a standard task layout to a project. Okay, uh, if you have multiple um, groups or teams, you can actually also provision projects and assign access to them uh, by using specific group names as well. Um, now in terms of roll up, so essentially what this is, is the Zoho Projects gives you the option to actually roll up dates from tasks and subtasks uh, to calculate the overall duration on your project. Okay, now by default, this is turned off to be flexible. Uh, so that you know you can accommodate change on your project. If you do want roll up, you can easily uh, check this and you can see here, this is going to throw a warning that says this cannot be disabled in the future. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. Uh, and then the last options here are customize the tabs for the project. We'll see this in a minute. Essentially what this is, is this is going to add a tab to your project record so that you can come in and access this type of information. Uh, and some of these will actually require you to use other Zoho products such as Zoho Books uh, or Zoho Expenses, for example. Now I'll just leave those um, as they are for demonstration purposes. And last but not least, project access. So here you can determine whether this is a private project, which means you'll essentially have to grant specific team members access to it, uh, or if it's public, meaning anybody who has access to your Zoho portal uh, will be able to see that project. Now that's important when you sign up for Zoho projects, you're actually provisioning a portal for you, for your organization, uh, and then you'll create your separate project records on that portal. All right, now I will go ahead and click add to create this project, okay? And you can see here that this project has been created, okay? Uh, now the next thing that I'll do and the last thing that I am going to do in the Zoho Projects interface is to just give you a rundown of what a project record looks like. So to do that, you wanna click on projects. That's going to bring you into this list of all of the projects that you're a member of. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Create Microsoft Teams and Zoho Projects Tutorial, okay? Uh, and what that's going to do is that's going to bring me into the project record, okay? Now what you'll notice is there are a series of tabs across the top of this project record, and those are the tabs that we created when we just configured the new project. Now I'll start off by showing you the project dashboard. So the dashboard is a summary view of all of the important details on your project. And so you can see here a summary of the different tasks by status. And you'll see I currently have six tasks on this project in open status. You can easily see overdue work items, 
uh, team status, for example, issue status, etc. Now, these dashboards, just like our homepage, are fully customizable. Each of these are sort of widgets and you can easily add uh, more widgets um, if you wanted to by clicking on the customize widgets option here, okay? Uh, next up is the tasks tab. So clicking on that is going to bring you into a list of all of the tasks on this project, okay? And I will just go ahead and expand uh, this overarching project task here. Okay, and so if you've ever used a tool like Microsoft Project, for example, uh, you can easily understand sort of the parent to child relationship or the task and subtask task relationship here. Uh, now, just like in other tools, you can actually customize your columns. So you can choose to display, to toggle on or off the different types of columns that will be displayed. Uh, and in Zoho Projects, you can even configure your own custom columns for your tasks as well. Now, like many other project management tools, um, you can actually toggle your view. So this is a classic view. You can see a plain view, which is just going to condense um, the different attributes that are shown here. And you can also see the Kanban view, which is going to allow you to view your task records in a Kanban board style view. And you can drag and drop these into different buckets uh, like you would other tools. Now, one of the best features of Zoho Project is the ability to view and customize Gantt charts. Okay, so Gantt charts remain uh, one of the most popular project management reporting tools. And so in Zoho Projects, you can fully access uh, and customize your Gantt charts, okay, uh, very easily. And you can, you know, choose to show different options and you can choose to view uh, tasks and milestones, etc. You can also switch your view to display the uh, chronological sequencing of your tasks, or perhaps you just want to display uh, milestones, for example. Next is the Documents tab. So clicking on the Documents tab is going to bring you into the place on your project where you can upload files. So Zoho Projects also features document management capabilities, and you can do this by clicking on the New button, and you can see here you can create folders, uh, you can upload files or entire folders, or even import documents from other cloud-based storage applications. So pretty handy feature. Next is the Milestones tab. So within Zoho Projects, you can also define milestones. Uh, and you can do that by clicking on the Add Milestone button. And essentially, this is going to allow you to create uh, a significant event on your project. Um, and the last tab that we'll look at in the Zoho Projects interface is the Timesheet tab. So this is another awesome feature of Zoho Project is that you can actually use it to uh, log time. So this is going to display a series of timesheets that have been submitted, uh, and you can actually just create your own timesheets by clicking on Add Time Log, and this is going to bring up uh, the new time log form where you can actually record time on the project tasks and subtasks, okay? Uh, and it is pretty awesome. You can put in your hours and you can select what kind of time is being entered, whether it's billable or non-billable. Now that's all that we're going to look at in the Zoho Projects interface. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at how you can actually use this awesome project management tool inside Microsoft Teams to help you manage your projects. All right, now the first thing that we're going to look at is how to actually add Zoho Projects to Microsoft Teams. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add this app as a tab in the general channel of my operations team. So you want to go ahead and click on the add a tab button. And here you want to go ahead and search for Zoho. And you'll see here Zoho projects. Now you'll also notice that some other Zoho apps are available for use in Microsoft Teams. So I'm going to click on Zoho projects and I'm going to go ahead and click add. And now Zoho Projects is going to run you through a series of prompts in order to install. Uh, so the first thing that you need to do is select your domain. So my domain ends in .com. So I'm going to go ahead and press proceed. And now Zoho is going to prompt you to log in using your, your Zoho credentials. 
So I'm going to go ahead and put in my credentials here. And now what Zoho Projects is going to do is it's actually going to ask you to select the portal. So if you have multiple portals, they will be displayed in this dropdown list. Now I only have one portal as you can see here, so I'm going to select that. And then the next thing Zoho Projects is asking you to do is to actually select the project that you want to embed in this channel of the team. So I'm going to go ahead and click create Microsoft Teams and Zoho Project Tutorial, and then I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And there you go, you are now going to be able to work with Zoho Projects directly in the channel of a team in Microsoft Teams. All right, so now we're going to look at how to use the Zoho Projects app in Microsoft Teams. Now you'll notice that the interface has adapted to take on the look and feel of Microsoft Teams. I actually like Zoho Projects interface as it appears in the Microsoft Teams app better than I do the native Zoho Projects web portal. Uh, to me, it just looks a little cleaner and easier to navigate. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that it appears that while you're using the Zoho Projects app, that there are actually fewer tabs than were displayed in the Zoho Projects web portal. And I will just pull that up here for demonstration purposes. In the project record here, you can see dashboard, tasks, Gantt and reports, documents, milestones, timesheets, etc. Now, for the most part, you can actually access all of the same functionality that is available uh, in the Zoho Projects online portal in the Microsoft Teams application. Uh, of course, with the exception of uh, configuration and settings associated with your project record. Um, things like provisioning users or creating different uh, form views, for example, uh, or adding fields to a form, for example, you'll have to do that kind of thing in the Zoho Projects portal. Uh, everything else is still available in the Teams app. It just looks a little different and you would access the features and functions a little differently. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to start by working with the tasks tab. Now you'll notice here that I've actually deleted all of my task records that were previously displayed here. Uh, and I will go ahead and walk through how to create those task records as part of the tutorial. Now, uh, the first thing that you want to do to create tasks in the Zoho Projects Teams app is you want to click on the tasks tab, and then you want to go ahead and click on the add task button. Now I am going to go ahead and create tasks and my overarching plan for how I would approach creating a YouTube video. So I typically start by creating an outline. Okay, and I will put in my description here. Okay, now you can, um, in the actual description, you have access to full rich text and formatting and uh, you can add pictures and hyperlinks, so it's pretty intuitive. Uh, and if you wanted to actually expand the editor, you could easily do that as well if you wanted to put in a lot more details. Uh, now I'll just collapse this editor by clicking on that button. Now when you're creating tasks, you also have the ability to create separate task lists. So if I click on this dropdown, you can see here internal lists and external. Uh, task lists are essentially a way for you to further segment or group your tasks. By default, all tasks will get added to one general list as you can see here. Now I'll just leave this as is. Now when you're creating task records, you can actually add attachments. So you can do that by clicking on drop files. And what this is going to do is bring up the upload interface. Now you'll notice that you can upload files from your computer by clicking on the desktop tab, uh, or you can upload files from Zoho Work Drive, which is Zoho's uh, file management or uh, document management solution. And you can also click on extensions and you could also upload files uh, through Google Drive. So Zoho Project does feature integration with uh, Google Drive if your organization or enterprise is using G Suite, for example. Now, I'm not going to upload an attachment to this record, so we'll just carry on. Uh, the next thing that you want to do is select the owner of this task, and you can click into this field to see a full list of the users in your portal. Uh, and in this case, I am the only user, so I'm going to assign this to myself. 
So next you'll want to put in the work hours that are going to be required to complete this task. Now Zoho Projects provides a few different ways for you to input the effort that is required on a task. Now you'll notice by default, the input method here is the number of hours per day. And the way that this works is you would specify the number of hours that you are going to work on this particular task per day. So if I put in two hours per day, for example, and click done, and then I come down to my start date and my end date. And so if I think this is going to take me about five days, you're going to notice that Zoho Projects will uh, take two hours per day multiplied by my duration and calculate that this task is going to take me 10 hours. Now you can also uh, switch this approach to a more conventional approach. For example, if you want to specify the total work hours that it's going to take, irrespective of your start and end date. If so, if I just wanted to say this is going to take uh, 10 hours of effort, I can easily do that as well. And you'll notice the option to specify a percentage of the amount of time that you have or the amount of capacity you have in a day um, as well. And again, it's going to calculate based on your start and your end date. Now I'm just going to use the work hours approach and I'm going to say that this is going to take me about two hours to complete and I'm going to click on done. And of course, with our tasks, we can also put in our expected start and end date. So you can click on the calendar icon and select uh, your date ranges. Now, in this case, I expect to uh, start my outline for this video on the 17th and I expect to complete it on the 19th, okay? Uh, you can also establish priorities for your tasks. So you can select your priority from the dropdown uh, and you also have the ability to tag tasks. Now tags are essentially just another attribute that we can use to help us sort of segment our tasks if we want to uh, get into some more advanced reporting or filtering. Uh, next, when we're creating tasks, we also have the ability to create reminders. Okay, so we can create reminders based on due date and that's sort of the default setting. And essentially what this is going to do is this is going to uh, fire a notification via email and uh, throw a notification in the actual uh, Zoho Projects app uh, to notify that task owner that this task is coming due. So if you wanted to set a daily reminder, for example, you could easily configure that by selecting daily and you can choose the time that you want your notification to be fired by filling out the hours and minutes. You could also choose to just fire a notification on a due date or uh, on a set number of days before the due date. So I'll just go ahead and put in uh, three days before the due date. Uh, and of course, you can also select who you would like to notify. So you can either notify the project owner, the task owner, uh, or even the creator of the task or uh, people that have actively opted to follow particular tasks so that they can stay up to date on uh, the progress of that task. Now I'm going to go ahead and just click set reminder. And of course, I did not select uh, the owner. So I will go ahead and do that. And now I'll click set reminder. And um, that's it. You could also set a recurrence if you wanted to for reminders. It's uh, pretty straightforward. You can just select your recurrence frequency. So again, it provides a lot of flexibility in terms of ensuring people stay on top of their task assignments. Uh, now, last but not least, something I really like is you also have the ability to record whether tasks are billable or non-billable. So again, depending on the type of projects and depending on um, whether you're using this tool for sort of managing internal work efforts where perhaps the time isn't billable, uh, or if you're working on client facing projects, then you can actually uh, set tasks to be billable and then have individuals record uh, time against the particular tasks. Now I'll just click non-billable. And now what I'm going to do is click on add. And there we go. We can see that this task has been created. And what you're seeing here is the task card. Okay, so uh, Zoho Projects in Teams provides you with this awesome card view so you can come in and see the details associated with this task, essentially everything that we just uh, filled out. Okay, you can also see that we have some additional options so you can toggle your status here on this task. Um, and if I scroll down, I can edit any of the attributes that we set uh, initially and I can also track my um, progress on this task 
by uh, completion percentage by just selecting from one of these fixed values here. And so I will go ahead and mark this as 40% completed. All right, now the next thing that we're going to look at in Zoho projects in Microsoft Teams are the additional attributes or details associated with task records that you have access to. So when you scroll down on your task record, what you're going to see is another series of tabs. Okay, so first off, you can see here comments. So you can actually have full on conversations and discussions about work that is being performed on a project and have that information stored uh, centrally right here on a task record. Okay, so for example, if I wanted to say I am experiencing writer's block in terms of creating my outline and I add that comment, I can have that comment displayed and have full on conversations logged right here. And you can see here just hovering over the comment will allow me as the author to edit or delete the comment. So very powerful. Now you also have the ability to create subtasks. Now there's a few different ways to create tasks and subtasks. And so um, if you wanted to you know, create a subtask right from a task record, it's as easy as clicking on the subtask tab and then clicking on add subtask. And this is going to bring up the same task card that we had just completed uh, when we created this create an outline task, okay? Uh, now, next up is the log hours. So again, one of the awesome features of Zoho projects is the ability to actually uh, perform time entry against work that's being performed. And so you can um, add a time log from the log hours tab of a task record by clicking on add time log. And what you're going to see here is the time uh, sheet or time log entry form. And so you can select your date, you can select uh, the individual, you can record your time. So if I put in five hours, for example, and then I can describe whether or not uh, this is going to be billable or non-billable. Now, because the task record was set to uh, non-billable, you'll see here that this field um, is defaulting to non-billable and I can't actually amend this. Okay, so very powerful. And again, I could even uh, put in a description or notes. And if I even wanted to set a start and end time, I can do that uh, by actually clicking on that and putting in my hours here. So I will uh, say that I worked on this for an hour between 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. and I'll click add. And so you can see here, I have now created a uh, time log or time entry against this particular task. Now, uh, another way to actually record time is to use the built-in timer. So you'll notice at the top of the task record on the header, there's this little timer icon. If I click on this, this is actually going to initiate a timer function. And if I navigate out of Teams, for example, and then come back into um, my project record, you will see that that timer is actually still going to run. And you can see here that the timer is still running and I can easily stop the timer uh, from here or I can click back into the task record and stop it. And again, what this is going to do is this is actually going to just log this uh, in the time entry section of our task here, okay? And so if I click off of my log hours, you can see that that new record has been added. So it's very, very powerful functionality. Uh, next is the documents tab. So again, you have the ability to upload uh, attachments or files directly to a task record. So uh, as we saw earlier in the tutorial, you can upload files to the project and here you can even upload them at a task level. Uh, next is forums. So in Zoho projects, you have the ability to create forums, which are uh, specific conversations that are grouped around a topic. Uh, and if you do create forums, you can actually associate those forums to a task. So again, it's just maintaining traceability of information associated with the work that's being completed. Uh, and so if I wanted to 
select a forum category and select my project. And then if I did have a forum, I would see those listed and I could actually go in and relate them to this task. The next tab is the dependency tab. And this is where you can come to create dependencies or relationships between tasks. So I am in my create an outline task. And if I would like to establish a dependency um, for this task, I can click on the line in the Gantt chart. And this is going to bring up a menu that will allow me to either uh, create a relationship with another task that may precede this one or that may succeed this one. So if I want to add a predecessor task, I would click on predecessor and then click add predecessor. Uh, or if I wanted to add a successor task, I would click on successor and then add it. Now in this case, after I create my outline, my next step would be to create a script. So I'm going to add successor and then I'm going to search for my create script task and if I click on this I can then set a dependency and you're going to see here that the Gantt chart has updated with the arrow to denote the dependency. Now if I click back onto this task and I click on successors what you'll notice is you even have the ability to define the type of relationship between the two tasks. So by default it is set to FS which is finish to start. Uh, if I click on this, I can change that relationship uh, to start to finish or finish to finish or, or start to start. Uh, and if I wanted to break the relationship, I can click on this red unlink button and it is going to break that relationship. Next, we're going to look at the status timeline. Now the status timeline shows you essentially how a task has progressed through the various states from created and open to in progress and in review. Now you'll see here that this is displayed in a list view. So from creation to status open, it was updated by and the time and it even shows you the duration. Uh, but what's even better is if you actually click on uh, the timeline view, it's going to show you the different changes in state as well as the duration between them in this nice visual. So you can easily see how this task has progressed through the different states in its life cycle. Now the next tab that we're going to look at is the issues tab. So you can actually um, either create new issues at a task level or you can relate existing issues to a task. And you'll see here that I've already gone ahead and created a task. Uh, if I wanted to either create a new one or associate an issue uh, that has already been created elsewhere, I can click on this associate issues button. And if I want to associate an issue to this particular task, I can search for it. Or if I want to just create a net new one, I can click on this button that says click here. And this is going to bring up the new issue card. Okay. Uh, and I'll just go ahead and fill this out. So I'm stuck. Okay, you can see here these cards look similar to the actual task creation card in that you have a title, a description that supports rich text. You have the ability to add attachments. Um, you can assign issues to actual users as well and you can even schedule reminders for these issues. You can add followers to these issues. You can add tags. Uh, set due dates and then you have some additional um, attributes here so you can actually um, flag issues as um, showstopper critical major so you can actually set the potential severity associated with this issue. Uh, now you can also relate issues to milestones. Now milestones is not something that is exposed in the Microsoft Teams Zoho project app uh, unless you're on a higher tier. Um, in order to create milestones, you'll have to do that from the Zoho projects portal. Okay, so if you did want to relate an issue to a milestone, you can do that as well. Uh, and then you're going to see some additional attributes such as module uh, classification. So it's to kind of characterize or segment these issues. Uh, and then you can also determine whether these issues are reproducible. So some of these are more applicable to if you're developing systems or software, for example. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click add and you'll see here that my new issue has been created. Now the last tab that we're going to look at is the activities tab and the activities tab is essentially an audit trail. Okay, so clicking on this is going to show you um, all of the different activity that has transpired on this particular task. It's going to show you uh, the change that was made and it's going to show you who made this change. So you can see here, I created this task and the time is shown. You can see here the next change is that um, the task percentage complete was updated. 
you can see here that I added a comment and that I updated the status, et cetera. So it's pretty handy in terms of being able to see all of the different events or changes that uh, were made on a particular task record. All right, now that wraps up how to create, edit, update tasks in the Zoho Projects Microsoft Teams app. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're now going to very quickly look at some key features of the task list view. Okay, so again, in order to see a full list of all your tasks, you want to come into the tasks tab. Uh, and essentially, this is going to show you all of your tasks and the associated data. So owners, tags, status, et cetera. Okay, and you can easily view all of these different uh, details of the task just by scrolling over. Uh, now, like many applications, you can even edit these values in line just by clicking on them. So if I wanted to change a particular task's owner, I could do that without actually having to click into the card view. If I wanted to actually change dates, again, I can just edit these values uh, right from this particular view. Okay, uh, now the next thing that we'll look at here is the actual uh, view options that are available. So you'll see by default, the uh, view that is chosen is all open. So this is going to show you all open tasks. Okay, so that's any task that is not uh, status closed. And when you click on this drop down, you're going to see a ton of different predefined views. So if you wanted to see all tasks, for example, if you had some closed ones, you could switch your view. Uh, if you wanna see only unassigned tasks, for example, you could select that particular view. Uh, so it's pretty customizable. Now you also have the ability to create your own custom view by clicking on this button. And here you can actually specify criteria for your views. So for example, uh, if I wanted to see only tasks where maybe a particular tag was uh, recording, I could set that parameter and give this a name. And so I might call this, you know, recording tasks. Uh, and then in terms of accessibility, you have the option to make these views um, accessible to all of your team members, or you can make them sort of private uh, so that only you can access them. So I'm going to leave this as um, view only to me. So I can only access this view and click save. And you're going to see here that I now have created a custom view, okay? Uh, the next thing that we're going to look at is uh, the ability to change columns or hide columns, for example. Uh, so if you see here this customize column button and click on it, um, just like in the Zoho Projects portal, you have the option to actually hide any of these columns by toggling them off. So that's actually going to hide a particular column uh, and you can even rearrange them by just dragging them into the order that you would like. Okay, so again, the Zoho Projects Teams application provides you with the flexibility to access the data in a way that is conducive to you and your approach to work. Um, now, the next thing that we'll look at is how to switch your view. So just like we saw with the Zoho Projects portal, you can view your tasks in this list view, or if you want, you can switch it to a Kanban board style view. Uh, and again, this is going to show you your tasks as cards and it's going to group them into the different states so that you can uh, visualize your work, okay? And again, you can click into these tasks to see the details uh, or you can just rearrange them uh, and drag them into the appropriate bucket as required. Now, clicking on the customized column here as well is going to provide you with some options as to how you want to view your tasks. So if you want to perhaps uh, have the compact view displayed and keep it a little cleaner, you could do that as well. All right, now the next thing that I'm going to show you is how to view some analytics and charts associated with your tasks. Now to do this, you want to switch back to the classic view Okay, and then you want to hover over the actual um, top bar of your task list and you wanna click on this little gear icon. Now, if you scroll down, you'll see this option that says chart view. And so this is a pretty cool feature that will just provide you with some visuals of the tasks that um, exist in your project record here. So you can see a pie chart for tasks by user. 
uh, tasks by status. And if you scroll down, you can even see task by percentage complete and by priority. Now this isn't much. Uh, you do have access to additional reporting capabilities in the Zoho projects portal, uh, but this is pretty good because it does provide some visualization as to the status and um, attributes of your work. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to move into the Gantt chart tab. So one of the best features of Zoho projects is the ability to create your Gantt charts. So you can actually uh, visualize the sequencing uh, of your work and the scheduling of your work. Um, now, the first thing that I'll show you with the Gantt chart is the ability to filter it. So right now, by default, it's just showing you all of your information. Uh, and if you wanted to perhaps drill down into some details, you can click on the filter button here. And so you could, for example, uh, filter by tasks of a particular status. If I only wanted to see tasks that are in progress, I can select that and click find, and it's automatically going to filter my Gantt chart down. Now to remove a filter, you just want to again, come back into the filter menu and click clear and your Gantt chart is going to reset. Uh, now, if you notice there is a scroll bar here, so you can actually view the full details of your tasks just by scrolling along here. Okay. Uh, and if you wanted to view perhaps um, instead of tasks by milestone, you could click on your milestone button here and this is going to show you a list of your milestones. Now again, just a reminder in order to create milestones and view milestones in the Microsoft Teams app, you do have to be on one of the higher paid tiers. Uh, otherwise, you'll have to access your milestones and create your milestones in the Zoho Projects portal. Um, next, just clicking on the show options button, you can actually add additional details to your Gantt chart. So you can see I am currently showing the title of the task. Uh, if I wanted to perhaps add the assignee, I can check that and that's going to show up. And if I also wanted to add the date, again, I can do that. So uh, it is pretty, pretty seamless. Now, one of the best features of Zoho projects is the ability to actually export um, tasks to PDF and to CSV or Excel files, okay? So clicking on this three dots here, the other actions button will allow you to export to PDF uh, or to export to tasks. And if I click on export to tasks, um, you can actually choose your view. So again, if you wanted to just export a particular view, you can select that. You can actually select either Excel file or CSV. Uh, and really one of the best parts of this is you can actually choose which data columns that you want to export. Okay, so it is um, pretty incredible to be able to export this data. Now the last thing that we're going to look at is the issues tab. Okay, now clicking on the issues tab is going to show you a list of issues that have been created. So you'll notice um, here is the issue that we created earlier in the tutorial. Uh, and here is the issue that was pre-existing that I created before this tutorial. Now, if you wanted to actually create another issue, you could do it from here by clicking on submit issue. Uh, and you'll notice that this card is the exact same card that we looked at a little bit earlier in the tutorial. All right, well, that's it. Uh, in this tutorial, I introduced you to Zoho Projects. I gave you a very brief walkthrough of how to use the Zoho Projects web portal. And then I showed you how to add Zoho Projects uh, to the channel of a team. Uh, and I gave you a good walkthrough of how to actually use Zoho Projects in Microsoft Teams. Now, just a reminder, if you do want to try Zoho Projects out for free, uh, check out my referral link in the description below. You can sign up for an account with that referral link and get access to this indefinitely and even use it in Microsoft Teams. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and be sure to subscribe to my channel to make sure you don't miss out on any of the latest Microsoft Teams tutorials. I'm Louis Yacobelis. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.